The famous Bizarro Theory 54B is featured in the next sequence. We're looking at the stripping shovel version. The 54B was built from 1939 until 1964, and the 54RB, built in Lincoln, England, was made up to 1973, the last machines being electric quarry shovels. The standard dipper on the 54B was two and a half yards, but as a stripper, shown here, it carried a two yard dipper. Boom length is 45 feet and a handle length of 32 feet. This machine was powered by a Buda diesel engine, 200 horsepower at 1000 RPM. The stripping shovel shown here is prob probably at work in southeastern Ohio, where the geology and low overburden depth allowed the small two-crawler type stripping shovel to operate. Notice there was no reclamation done here, no topsoil salvaged. A nice easy digging for the shovel. Shallow overburden. With a depth of overburden about 30 feet, the 54B could strip a cut about 30 feet wide. That was sufficient room for a, a small three-quarter yard or one yard coal shovel to follow behind and load highway type tandem trucks. This cut here looks as though it's the last strippable by this machine as the overburden is getting deeper. Notice on this machine also the dipper stick is tubular which will not allow any torsional stresses to transmit back to the boom. The cycle time was very fast for a two yard long boom shovel. Notice the chain driven drum at the lower end of the boom for the crowd ropes. Of course the standard 54B crowd is a chain crowd driving driven through rack and pinions. So for the long boom version they went to the rope crowd as shown here. With the ropes wound on the drum at the lower end of the boom. Now let's sit back and watch poetry in motion as this 54B strips through some of the Ohio countryside.
Now we'll take a look at a 54B drag line. This machine is probably at work somewhere in South America. The standard drag line bucket is two and a half yards carried on an 80 foot boom, although booms up to 100 feet can be had. This operator appears not to be in the same class as the stripper 54B shown in the previous scene. The next sequences are of the various machines in a limestone quarry in the north of England. We see a modern cable tool drill. There's some of the Northern England countryside and the drill working on the edge of the quarry face. It's the crawler mounted cable tool drill, as the sign said. This is one of the Bucyrus Armstrong drills built by Rustin Bucyrus in Lincoln, England. These same drills were built in various models by Bucyrus Erie and uh, they were used in the USA in similar operations. There's the rail car system for transporting the limestone to the cement plant. There goes the blast. Pretty good fragmentation there. Ready for loading into the rail cars. At first, the floor must be cleared with a bulldozer. It's an international TD-18. These shots were taken at more than one quarry. At this particular quarry there would be haulage trucks and at the one we saw before there were rail, rail cars hauling the material to the quarry plant.
Now we're going to see some real cars loaded by a 100 RB electric shovel. The shovel is three and a half yard capacity and the 100B from which the 100RB uh, was derived was launched in 1926 as one of Bissara series quarry and mine shovels. The 100RB was made up to 1950 when it was superseded by the 110B. Some of these 100Bs were steam powered. Now we're going to look at a couple of small one and a half yard shovels working in a limestone quarry and a granite quarry. This is a 37B electric shovel. 37B was built between 1931 and 1943. Here it's seen loading one of the uh, popular machines of haulage in Britain, the small dumper. There are many makes of these small dumpers in Britain, the most popular being Aveling Barford and Muir Hill. The Muir Hill was built over a Fordson tractor. The company is the Whittick Granite Quarry in central England. Now here's another machine, this is a 43RB, built in Lincoln, England, it's the same as the 43B, built in South Milwaukee. The 43B 
was built between 1931 and 1939, but continued to be manufactured in the UK at Lincoln right up until 1955. The bucket size on the 43 is one and three quarter cubic yards, and as common with all the Lincoln machines built in, in that era, rust and diesel engines were substituted for their American counterparts on the diesel version machines. In the Wittick granite quarry, we can see this 43RB and we just saw the 37B, both of which were built in England and worked in the same quarry. The truck is an old Fordson. Here's a film of the famous Bissara Siri 120B electric revolving shovel. This film was made when the 120B was first launched. The idea of this movie was to convince users of the heavy railroad type shovel like this one here that a revolving shovel would have far more advantages. The 120B combines the power and ruggedness of the railroad shovel with the speed and mobility of the small revolving shovel. The 120B was the first of the Bissara series quarry and mining shovels introduced in 1925. This is the plant of the New York Track Rock Company, who purchased the first 120B. There's a view of their plant and their quarry. And you can see they used a system of rail car transport. And there's the 120B in the background at the quarry face. They still used uh, several steam-powered machines in the quarry when the electric 120B first arrived. Here's some of the drilling and shooting. Loading one of the holes.
that gas should produce good fragmentation. Yeah, looks good digging. There's the propel. A big advantage over laying down rail tracks for the old railroad type shovels. When the 120B was first introduced, it was advertised as a four yard shovel. But soon afterwards, its size increased to five yards. And it stayed in the Bissar serial line until 1951, when it was superseded by the 150B. Now we're going to go through a sequence of the components of how the 120B is constructed. Through the crawl base, revolving deck, machinery. This is the steam version obviously being shown here. And the boom. There were 333 120Bs built, including 30 at Rustin Bissaris's Lincoln plant. The machine shown here at the New York Track Rock Corporation is serial number 4504 and was the first 120B to go to work. Here you can see the arrangement of the machinery as being described. The boom carries the electric crowd motor or steam motor as the case may be. You can see that the boom is built, built on similar lines to the railroad type shovel. Very heavy steel castings with riveted construction.
New York Trap Rock Corporation ended up with a total of seven 120 Bs, three of which were steam. Strangely, this first machine was electric. Soon after this one, they purchased a used steam machine. They also purchased two steam machines as late as 1939. Then they purchased two electric ones in 1946 and a further electric in 1949. There were only four Steam 120Bs built, however. Three of them were in this quarry of New York Trap Rock. Now we're going back in time again to look at some early Ruston machines. This is the famous Ruston number no. 4 in operation as a shovel. The number no. 4 was a luffing shovel, which means that the dipper stick is pinned to the boom and there is no crowd mechanism. The luffing shovel was popular in the UK. The four leading makes, Ruston, Priestman, Rapier, and Smith Rodley all had luffing shovel attachments for their smallest excavators. The simplest form of drum drive was possible on these shovels, as no reverse was necessary for the crowd drive. On some machines, an automatic rope crowd was offered as an option to the luffing shovel, which also would not need a reversing drive for the crowd. Luffing shovels were made like this um, up to the early 50s in Britain. Although this, this film here would be made probably in the 1920s. Nine hundred and thirty-six Ruston number fours were made between 1926 and 1934. It was so popular that after the merger of Bissaris Erie and Ruston Hornsby in 1930, the number four was retained in the Ruston Bissaris line for a further four years, long after the previous Ruston machines were discontinued. In the next few sequences, you will see the skimmer version and backhoe version of the Ruston number no. 4. These shots show the speed of this small machine. Although I think the speed of the film has increased a little bit here as a sales gimmick. Now here's the skimmer attachment coming. And skimmers were popular in England up to the three quarter yard size machines. Smith Rodley had a famous uh, Smith 21 model uh, built up to the mid 50s with the skimmer attachment. The jackhammers are breaking up the pavement and here the skimmer is coming along and peeling off the thin layer of the macadam material. The front end loader mounted on a crawler tractor is the machine which caused the skimmer to be obsolete. <laughs> 